Hello, everybody. Hi. Good to see you. So today we're going to talk about uh, mental health, but having to do with uh, social media. So I have Gemma Carell. Hi, Gemma. Hi. <laughs> From England, originally, and uh, Cindy Eckert, who is fantastic. But let me give you a uh, correct introduction, starting with Gemma. She is a writer, an artist, cartoonist, uh, originally from England, as I said earlier. Uh, some of Gemma's published works include The Warrior's Guide to Life and A Pug's Guide to Etiquette. Gemma's work explores the themes of mental illness and women's health. And one of the things I love about what she does, she has collaborated with charities including Mental Health America and the Red Cross. And she loves to use her story to enhance people's lives. Uh, Cindy Eckhart is a self-made serial entrepreneur and a vocal advocate for women. Cindy defies convention, which is true. It's not just here in my notes. Uh, she, in her industry, uh, in her companies, in her outcomes, her work today is the Pinkubator continues to break barriers by investing in and mentoring other women to get her same outcomes. She's on a mission to make women really rich. So if you're a woman here, that's positive. <laughs> Over a distinguished 25-year career, <laughs> which is amazing, she's been doing this over 25 years, in healthcare, in only the last 10 years, she has built and sold two businesses for $1.5 billion. So let's give them a round of applause. If you don't mind. All right, so um, I get to interview a lot of amazing people in my life. So hi, amazing people. Hi. So I'm going to start with Gemma. When you thought about doing this on mental health, what was on your mind? What did you think this conversation would be about? Well, since we're at South by Southwest, um, this is the first time that I've come here, so I wasn't sure what to expect, but I knew that there was, um, there'd be a lot of very inspiring people here. Um, and I, having um, learned more about you and about Cindy, um, I was really excited to speak to people who um, you know, come from different backgrounds, um, and I knew that I have a slightly different perspective to bring. Mm -hmm. um, so my thoughts were around how I specifically um, speak about mental health in my work, but I'm super interested in hearing. Very nice. Everything. How about you, Cindy? What were you thinking when you were preparing in your mind or maybe yeah. even writing notes about this talk? Yeah, well, first, how about to be uh, interviewed by an amazing person in Tim's story. So I'm just thrilled to be in this company uh, on the stage. And I think it's such an important conversation um, that we're having. I think having been through the wars of entrepreneurship, a lot of what we're seeing online right now is a pretty big disconnect from the realities of yeah. what it can be like. And I think it's healthy, um, you know, particularly at a venue like South by Southwest, to have the opportunity to speak about that. Very nice. So the idea of mental health, as all of you know, uh, if you just were to look it up in a health journal, it is our emotional, psychological, and social well-being. So we're talking about mental health having to do with social media. So as we know, social media is this. It is websites, apps that allow users to create and share content or to participate in social networking, OK? Mm -hmm. So all of us use social media. Uh, so Gemma, how important is social media to you in getting out your message? Social media is very important to me. Um, I actually started working at about the same time that it was becoming a big thing. Um, Instagram um, started about the same time that I graduated from college. So I was really lucky, I think, to get in there at that point where it was all new and exciting. And um, I feel like m myself and my work have kind of grown with social media. Um, and so it's very intrinsic to my work. Uh, my work is visual, so something like Instagram is obviously the perfect platform for me. And it's also a great place to engage with the audience. It's a whole new world where, as before, somebody who's maybe a writer or an artist would just be kind of at home making 
art, uh, which I still am, but at least I have like this window to the world and a way to communicate with others now. So those that are new to your work, um, what are you presenting on social media? Is it your art? Is it your writing? Is it, is it humorous? What's kind of your style? Um, so my style, I would say, is mostly, um, at least on social media, is comic-based. Um, so although um, I do illustration work, I do commission work for clients, um, I also write. Social media lends itself to um, smaller vignettes, uh, co comics which are, you know, you have a limit of number of frames that you can use. Um, I've learned that simple messaging and straightforward visuals are the best for social media. So it's been a really good way of, uh, for me to um, really condense my work down to, to basics and um, the most kind of the core of the messaging. Um, especially around mental health. Very nice. So Cindy, with you, I started seeing you on like my radar a while yeah. ago, and I thought it was pretty cool because you know your story is amazing of selling even Thank one you. company for a billion in cash. Thank you. And one question is, do your family members ask you for loans? <laughs> Um, I actually, when I, it turned out I didn't have a rich uncle, but I had two big brothers and I was pretty effective at guilting them into giving me like a hundred bucks to start. Um, <laughs> so they did pretty well in the end uh, with those early days shares. Um, but yeah, so I, I, it's a, it's an interesting story and I think there's a perception like, oh, that's, you know, that's the holy grail, if you will, of the entrepreneurial dream. And yet I didn't exactly have a billion dollar happy ending, right? Yes. I've, it's been a story that is... Uh, it's continued, right? Every single day um, is putting in the work and fighting the challenges. Um, so it, it looks a lot prettier theoretically, right? No, that makes when you, sense. When you consume. So how did you utilize social media yeah. to get your message out of what you were doing? So I didn't. <laughs> um, interestingly, Gemma and I had this conversation. I'm actually here to take a master class because she's so brilliant um, on social. I hope you'll all follow her because you will thank me later. You'll be laughing this evening um, at, at her work. But uh, I didn't actually for all of those years that I was just in the trenches building businesses, so I was late to the party, if you will. I'd already sold my business when I got onto Instagram and, uh, and all social you know, platforms. But it, it's been so wonderful to, for me as an opportunity to connect and mentor other women in a way that I didn't even have that access. I would have actually enjoyed that support system if I had been on there earlier. I'm in a highly regulated industry. Probably the lawyers were like, don't even think about it, mm -hmm. um, considering I'm, I'm used to speaking my mind. But I do think in a way it's the great equalizer because you can reach out to people and actually have an instant connection that you might not otherwise find yourself in the room with. Very good. So when you, when you talk about challenges in social media, uh, some of the things that uh, I found in my researchers are these. Uh, Self-image. Yeah. Uh, also, fear of missing out, because you see other people like moving on and you have a fear of missing out. And also, online reality versus reality. So I'll, I'll start with you, Cindy. Yeah. Online reality versus reality. Yeah. Um, radically different. I think you're watching the highlight reel. And in a way, you're also watching the modern version of television, right? Social media is entertainment. I think we see that even more so now with the construct of videos and everything else that everyone is there to show their best self, their best day, um, and, uh, and much less of the real slog yes. of what it's all about. I, I mean, again, from an, you know, the lens of entrepreneurship, I chuckle many times when I'm watching you know, folks that are um, sort of pushing their content as this is what it's like, um, you know, presenting only one image. I, I'm, I'm sad already for people who believe that to be the path um, that lies ahead for them. And okay. I think it doesn't allow a construct of the right We're gonna take that deeper in just, just yeah. a minute because I wanna go there fast. Yeah. So Gemma, when I talk about online reality versus reality, what goes to your mind? Um, so I think that um, particularly in the creative world, um, a lot of the issue is that comparison, you know, they say comparison is the thief of joy. Yeah. It's also kind of the thief of creativity that you can spend so much time looking at other people's work and output 
and just um, having it's the same concept of like FOMO, like everybody's clearly coming up with amazing ideas every day and like constantly working for these big companies and it's you know it's the same it's just a um, constructed view of what's actually happening behind the scenes. So did you ever have a feeling yourself like you were being left behind? Oh yeah yeah and I still do that? yeah um, because um, you know there's a there's a lot of jobs to go around and even if it's like an, a job that I don't particularly want to do myself there's um, you might see somebody working like I've seen people working for a client like Disney or some like someone that I love um, and it's very easy to feel like well why did they get that job what do I they have that I don't yeah and so it's easy to forget that you know there's there's plenty to go around and there's different styles to prepare for this I watched three interviews of both of you yeah and so, Gemma, you talked in one interview that you, you can be shy. You tend to be on the shy side. So how have you had such a loud message by being so shy? Well, I think that that's where social media has really been great for me because it's, um, I've always found it difficult to articulate myself verbally. Um, and I found throughout my life that um, drawing pictures and writing have allowed myself allow me to express myself so social media in that sense for me personally is you know I can write and draw and I can say exactly what I want to say in visual form and I think those are some of the positives of, of social media and we'll get into some of the challenges a little deeper here in just a minute but but Gemma I see that in 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 watching your work for a while that you're able to express yourself express your message and also uh, help with mental help, uh, health, et cetera, uh, on your platform. So just for those that do not know, just on Instagram alone, how many people are following you? Um, the current count is, I know it's over 900,000, but I can Which that exactly. is a lot, if you didn't know that. <laughs> That's quite a lot, yes. And, uh, you know, to me, it's pretty abstract. And it's the thing is, is she's, the not, <laughs> she's not real aggressive with this. Mm. And I think this is very important. One reason we wanted Gemma on is that you're, you're not like the typical friend of mine who's so aggressive and pushing, pushing. You see, she's just an artist, right? For sure. So, so Cindy, when you hear what she's saying, what goes to your mind? Um, listen, the, the, the fear of missing out and all, I think we all feel that. It's very human um, to have that comparison daily. So I think no matter where you are in life, it's human to um, see somebody else's and think, oh no, why not me? mine too um why not and uh so I, I just it just resonates i think it's it's very similar okay so let's talk about you because you can be competitive uh, you think that's what they tell me i know <laughs> and so when you see other entrepreneurs yeah. just non-stop yeah talking about all the stuff they got yeah what's going through cindy's mind um I, I would hope that I'm at a place in life. I can't tell you I would have been here younger, but I'm, I would hope that I'm at a place in life where I'm I'm excited for them mm -hmm. for the most part. Doesn't mean that every once in a while that like you know competitive nerve isn't struck, um, but I think it's also it, I try to sit with it and make a conscious choice of you know whether or not you imitate yes. right or you just show up as you. And, um, and it's not, I don't value some of those things in the same way that some of my peers do. Um, some of the material things are not as important to me. I think there's a moment in life in which uh, hopefully you switch from having to prove it um, to having to give it. So good. So I'm gonna lay a foundation that both you guys can run on. So here's one of the questions that somebody brought to me, and that is this. What concerns you most about how you see entrepreneurs portraying themselves on social media. So Cindy, I'll start with you, then to Gemma. What concerns you the most? Um, what concerns me the most is the glamorization of it all. The instant, like, oh, I did this, I got the check, I'm flying my private jet, I'm all of those things, uh, which I think are a far cry from the true journey. And I have watched in working with younger, I sit on an advisory board uh, for a college that has one of the top 10 entrepreneurship programs in the country, and I watched the, the mental and emotional toll of this on them for what their expectation is, and when they get into it, 
all of a sudden they think, wait, wait a minute, like this isn't the picture that I was sold, if you will, and they're following all of those people. So I think they have to be really conscious of that. Very good. So in about 20 minutes, we're going to open it up to Q&A and we're going to dialogue together. That's kind of my style. But, but Gemma, same question. Let me read it again. What concerns you most about how you see entrepreneurs portraying themselves on social media, if you are concerned? Um, this concern would be um, lack of authenticity. Um, I think it's pretty easy for an audience to see when someone's not being authentic. And um, people are, you know, sometimes quick to jump onto bandwagons. And uh, in some ways, mental health can be kind of a bandwagon. There's mm -hmm. people who use kind of the um, the, sp the speech of therapy um, for th in their work without having to having actually put the work in behind them. And that's something that I'm pretty conscious of doing myself is that I'm only speaking from my personal experience and I'm not trying to, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a therapist, I'm not trying to give advice, I'm just speaking from my perspective. That is interesting what you're saying because it's almost as though people look at what's trending and then they begin to go there. Yeah. It's like you'll see sometimes somebody on social media and they'll say, I'm fasting from social media, but now I'm back. And I was like, uh, to be honest with you, I didn't notice you were gone. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's right. Because that's very, very common, yeah. but I see like one person doing that yeah. and then it takes off. So Gemma, that's interesting what you're saying yeah. because mental health has become a hot topic. Yeah. And you know, mostly with what we're going through with the pandemic, now with what's taking place in Ukraine, we have a lot of people going through stuff and even with me, I am a uh, executive life coach at a company called Live Person, which is an AI company, the number one AI company in the world. Why would they hire a life coach? Because we're in a pandemic mm. and people are going through mental health problems. But to, to go with what you're saying, Gemma, I think we have to be very careful about what space we're getting into and make sure that we're being authentic about it. Mm -hmm. Right. OK, Cindy, so a question that I wrote down is a dark season in your business when you were uh, on social media. Yeah. And the question is, were you sharing about your dark season? And if so, how much were you sharing? I think the way that I share the dark seasons of which, you know, pick the week, pick the day are is humor. Um, sort of self-deprecating humor because it's really how I'm coping with it. So, you know, without marginalizing, I think how tough it is to go through, the, the humor allows me a comfort in sharing it in a way. So I think that uh, I'm, I'm regularly showing that it's not so glamorous, um, you know, not so perfect. Yes. And I think that's really just an important to do and, and therapeutic for me because why wouldn't I use that tool? I do feel the support, you know, the community of followers that when I am going through it and I put it out there, there's a, a bit of a keep going, like that a girl. Yeah. Like, I and gotcha. I think from the outside, when I started following you, I, I was very fascinated that you are uh, as successful as you are and you were using so much humor that, you know, even those videos where you can like act yeah. and use somebody else's voices. Yeah, 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 sure. I was shocked. Did you even do those? <laughs> right? Yeah. I'm like, this girl's got a billion. She could have an <laughs> island right now. And right yeah. now she's entertaining me. <laughs> so, so you're saying you did that because that's you, but is yeah. there another reason? I, I think it's, I, I think that it's a, a joy for me to connect with people, um, it's a it's a form of self-expression, an outlet, if you will, and um, it allows me to find sort of misfits out there who relate, um, and I like that. Okay. And I guess I feel a little a little bit of um, little satisfaction, if you will, that you're not alone in it. Okay, let's talk about social media uh, pushback that that you two have received. Yeah. So we'll start with you, Cindy. Okay. Um, I think you would be a target. Yeah. And we've never talked about that. Yeah. But if you are a target, who targets you and what do they say sometimes? Depends on which stage. I mean, when I was going through getting, you know, the media dubbed female Viagra approved, it was pretty vicious um, because, you know, sex tends to ignite 
real deep uh, emotions and points of view in all of us. And, um, and that was just, I, I think there is a common thread through all of it, which is to be dismissive or to marginalize and, uh, and see how you react. And um, I tend to use that as a little bit of fire uh, to keep going. So you didn't your take out your gangster rap si side <laughs> of you and go back at them. No, I, look, I, I think there's, um, there are, I'll, I'll, give it, I'll give an example. I actually, during you know, the, the whole mask versus non-mask, um, and, uh, and I had somebody who followed me who was really mad that I was masked at the gym mm -hmm. and had a whole diatribe about it. And I thought, you know, we can go toe to toe on what our philosophies are there, or I can just appeal to them because I know they're following me because they are an entrepreneur. And I said, look, whatever your position is, here's, why, here's my bottom line. I'm on the side of the small business owner. And mm -hmm. I'm gonna do whatever that small business owner ah. asks me to do to stay open. Yeah. And I want them to stay open. Don't you want them to stay open? Mm -hmm. And it really changed, so every once in a while, if there's, you know, I think if you can find a way to connect in something that you, a, a shared belief, it's worth going at it. And other times, it's just you're never going to change something. So did that life. concern you that you had part of your group yeah. that was challenging you? Because a lot of people that I work with, they will compromise, compromise, compromise yeah. to try to keep the 100%. Oh, no. But in my opinion, you cannot keep the 100%. Absolutely not. No, a absolutely not. If somebody doesn't, uh, there's a famous story in business, if I can share it quickly, it's Southwest Airlines. It's my favorite no, take your business time. story. And, um, and I think I love it because when you think about when they first came out, it was a radical concept to actually have humor in the airline industry. The airline industry was all about safety. And on one of the very first Southwest flights, the flight attendant got on and said, you know, in the case of a water landing, we'll be serving Mai Tais off the left wing. <laughs> well, somebody sitting on that plane went mental, right? Ballistic. What do you mean? You're not taking this seriously. I'm very scared flyer. And of course, she wrote a letter, as this would go. You write the company, I'm very unhappy. And as the folklore goes, it made its way all the way up to the desk of the founder and CEO, Herb Kelleher. And he wrote her back on his letterhead, and he wrote three words, we'll miss you. That is bold. How much bold. you guys love that? We'll miss you, and I love that story so much because in it, he wasn't going to compromise. She was never going to be happy flying Southwest Airlines, but what he knew is millions of other people would be. You're not, I'm not for everyone. And so you can come on and, and take the shot, go for it. That's so powerful, and I think that Part of the, the challenge of trying to live up to everybody yeah. um, is trying to appease them and please them. Why? And it's not going to be good for us. It, uh, it, it compromises the authenticity that Gemma talked about, and I think she's right. Ultimately, an audience will, maybe not immediately, but ultimately, they will figure that out. So Gemma, are you challenged sometimes for your style, your, your philosophy, your things you say? Yes, I mean, I think to be a person on social media with a certain following, it's it's going to happen. Um, uh, I really enjoyed that Southwest story. <laughs> I hadn't heard it before, and it's actually funny because I'm a very nervous flyer, and <laughs> I love Southwest. I always <laughs> fly good. Southwest because, because they of the put humor. you at ease. Exactly. Yeah, that's, it's putting you at ease is is the the best. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, I'm often challenged and I really struggled with it. I still struggle with it sometimes, um, but I am, I'm kind of a, I'm a born people pleaser and I hate the idea that somebody could be upset by my artwork because that's the opposite of what I'm trying to do. Um, but on the other hand, I have to um, remind myself that people aren't necessarily upset by you or what you're saying. They're upset about something else, and they're just using um, you as a, as a sounding board, basically. Um, I've noticed that's happening more and more recently, um, ever since the pandemic and now the war in Ukraine. People are unhappy, and, um, you know, it. people are taking it out on whatever they kind of whatever's in front of them and social media is often what's in front so yes yeah i i try to take it everything with a pinch of salt okay for those who are coming in late we're talking about mental health which is our emotional psychological and social well-being in social media 
which is websites and apps that allow users to create and share content uh, or also to participate in conversation with other people. So, uh, Cindy, let's talk about self-image yeah. in social media. Uh, there's a lot of talk about filters. Uh -huh. So there's a thing that came out a few months ago, like, I'm filtered, I'm not filtered, yeah. I'm parased out, I'm not parased out. <laughs> Is that sad if as a man that I know this stuff? I know, if we could only be parents out, right? Okay, so <laughs> talk to me about this thing yeah. of self-image and yeah. being your authentic self. Yeah. Do you post yourself, yeah. like, fresh up in the morning or late at night or your hair kind of whacked out? I don't know. Um, I have one right now in my story, my rollers and my hair this morning. Uh, but, yeah, with, like, one eye open, probably not. Um, nobody needs to see that. I don't even want to see that <laughs> for what it's worth. Um, and uh, and I tend to be a pretty girly girl. Yes. Um, so I, I, you know, and I like that. And for me, actually, I spend a lot of time with young female founders who have received the message to, you know, suit up and wear the pantsuit to make it in the man's world. And I, I reject that notion. Mm -hmm. I reject the notion that femininity isn't a strength in business. And I was told that through my whole career, right? Don't wear that, you know, do not wear heels, do not wear makeup, don't paint your nails, all of those things, which is compromising my authentic self. And what I learned along the way is if I'm in an environment in which I can't be me, leave. Yes. And so I, my, my pink is an irreverence to that, right? Pink mm -hmm. for me um, is power, not weakness. And, uh, and so probably that image as well is always presenting myself as the way that I want to look, right? Which I love because I think that uh, if you listen to some of the critics, then you might want to post something yeah. where you're not in pink yeah. or looking. Oh, I've been told that by everybody. Please. Just lose the pink. I'm like, pink's me. Look at every every childhood picture. I'm in pink. Pink is pink is who I am. Hopefully, you guys are loving this, right? <laughs> and so I'm not not I'm not compromising it. Okay, good stuff. Gemma, uh, self image and um, do you use a lot of filters? Do you not use a lot of filters? Are filters good or filters not so good? What's your thought on that? Well, I very, very rarely post um, images of myself anywhere, um, apart from on my personal Facebook page, and even then, not very often. So, um, for me, I've got this, basically an avatar of myself, like this cartoon image of myself. Um, I get compared to Wes Waldo a lot, <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, even though it isn't me, it's... Um, it's still important to me that it, it reflects who I am. So, you know, I actually do wear a stripy shirt every day like I do in my cartoons. Yeah. Um, and, you know, if I was posting images of myself, then would I use filters? Probably. Um, but um, I, I would like to think that I wouldn't f feel like I had to. Yeah. I'd probably just use them because I wanted to. I like that. Didn't have to, want to. Yeah. All right, because both of them are good communicators. Let's say great communicators. Um, Cindy, I want you to take a few minutes and just share what's on your heart about this subject of social media, mental health, yeah. and about truly how you're using this platform to change a lot of people's lives. Mm -hmm. And maybe within this little talk that you give, just maybe share a story of somebody that has been connected to you. And you know, uh, you were aware of this. Yesterday I met with somebody, yeah. and it was because of social media. Right. That Dan Fleischman yeah. and all of us were on a group, yeah. and I met with somebody that wanted to meet with me. If it wasn't for social media, we couldn't have done it. That's right. Okay? For sure. So just share whatever's... What's there. on my heart? Um, well, I think as it relates to just the topic today, it, it is about, um, you know, this construct of entrepreneur, the entrepreneurial journey as um, immediate... Uh, you, you all know what, um, there's no such thing as an overnight success story, right? There's an unbelievable behind the scenes of heavy lifting, dark days, um, moments of feeling disconnected. And that just is why I was so excited by this opportunity just to speak about that and for what you all are going through uh, with your respective questions. Um, I don't like that. There's a, I call it, we talked a little bit about this, like the Shark Tank culture of entrepreneurship. Yes. Make no mistake, I love Shark Tank. 
I love it. I think it is, um, I have a goddaughter who came to visit and she said, hey, you know, can we sit down tonight and watch Shark Tank? I wanna know what companies you would invest in. And I said, we're gonna sit down and watch Shark Tank and you're gonna tell me which companies you would invest ah. in. And she got out her calculator and she was looking at that TV and she's like, that is a ridiculous valuation. <laughs> and I thought, I did not know the word valuation. Um, you know, I, I, maybe I only learned that a couple years ago. But uh, it, it's, it's great and yet the destination is funding. That mark of approval is I get the check. I will tell you from my experience, that's when terror strikes because you have to pay that check back and deliver more. And I think that we can all attest to reading headlines, companies that are the biggest, sexiest, most hyped companies, and we pick up one day a business journal and they've gone bankrupt overnight. That's true. Funding isn't it, right? Mm -hmm. And it's all, and I think that's the, that's the quick flash. That's the billboard, right? And we feel like, oh, they got the check. Oh, yeah. they're funded. Mm -hmm. Oh, they've made it. And they have not made it. Um, but I, I hope that in some small way, having gone through the wars, um, still going through the wars, uh, helping others build companies through my pinky baiter, is we're presenting a bit more realness to that story. I love that. And, um, and, I, and I love social. Like I, like I said, I, I would have would have been fascinating to really have used that tool um, in, in building uh, some of my businesses. I mean, I'm doing it today, um, but I was sort of late to that adoption and um, the way that it connects us to people. And I get in my DMs every day, which I do answer and read, I, I have a woman who reaches out who will say, you know, hey, like I'm really struggling with this. What do I do? Um, yes. I had a woman who said um, she couldn't, she could no longer take anybody out to dinner because everybody, all the clients, she worked in a very male-dominated industry, all the clients um, would ask her out on a date. And, you know, I can't take anybody out to dinner anymore. And I said, oh, no, you're not giving up your business. That's the way you do business, right, in your industry. That's how you get that extra time. And so we talked a little bit about I would use humor. I'd sit down at the next yes. dinner and be like, you will not believe what the last guy did. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I said, I promise you, that man will not ask you for a date and he'll probably feel bad uh, as a good guy that that happened to you. But you know, it's little moments like that of a tangible, this is my story, I hope it helps. That's awesome. And I like that she's uh, looking at her DMs herself. Yeah. And answering. Yeah. Uh, Gemma, what's on your mind, your heart about social media, mental health? Um, yeah, I agree about um, answering DMs. I think it's really important to um, engage um, fully and not yeah. just kind of give lip service in the comments so that people can see that you're engaging. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, um, I get a lot of people um, asking me questions about mental health in particular, and um, I'm very, very careful about what I say there. Um, I'm careful not to. But I'm Gemma, tell them, them why them. we have to be so careful because with, with what I do as a comeback coach, I have many people that DM us say, if you don't help me, I'm done. Yeah, that's scary. So, so th that's a very serious thing. And so um, with you talking about mental health, you're probably getting something to at least a, a high degree of severity so it's very, very important that we watch what we say, right? Yeah. Yes, very. And um, I have a list of um, people that, uh, companies that I direct people to. Um, I am honest and I just say, look, I, this is not something that I feel equipped to deal with myself. Um, but here is, um, here are some phone numbers, here are some websites. Um, and um, you know that's that's all I can do. I I struggle with feeling responsible for people, but there's um, you know there's only a certain amount that you can put yourself out there. Yes. So a um, couple weeks ago, I, I almost got a little bit angered at a few of my friends that you know you had so many things going on with the pandemic, and then in came the situation with Ukraine. Yeah. And they almost seemed oblivious that something was going on in the real world yeah. with the type of posts. Yeah. So how important is the tone of what we're saying on social media? And should we pay attention to what's actually happening in society? 
Start with Gemma. Yeah, I think it's um, important to um, acknowledge that things are happening in society, of course, but I think, um, as I was saying before about authenticity uh, and bandwagon jumping, um, I think it's also important um, to, if you're going to speak about something, to speak from a place of knowledge and, um, and truth. Um, I personally haven't, I've yet to write something about the war in Ukraine, which obviously is very upsetting and very complex. And I don't want to just put an image up there of a blue and yellow flag or, or like yeah. a dog <laughs> with mm -hmm. a flag, you know. Yeah. Um, without having done my research and, you know, it's I also struggle with should I be posting anything at all at the moment? Should I... Um, this isn't a time to be making jokes, but I think actually it is a time to be using humor. And, um, you know, humor is one thing that ties everybody together when you're in a difficult situation. It's I really like your yeah. vantage point because you're, you're saying you don't feel a need to jump in. And so I think I see it from a different perspective because what I do, you know, I am a humanitarian, so I see it through that lens. But I like what you're saying. You're saying that's really not what I do. Mm -hmm. So you do feel it, but that doesn't mean you're going to put up the Ukrainian flag or whatever the situation is. Right. You don't have to be everything to everyone. You can just rely on your personal skills and use those uh, as you see appropriate. Okay. Cindy, talk to us about tone yeah. and why tone is important or not important. I, I think there's a litmus test um, in social that is, uh, will it be harmful or will it be helpful? Oh. Right? Those mm -hmm. are sort of, uh, with everything that you post, will it be harmful because of the moment in time or that it's at somebody else's expense, um, you know, offensive in a way? And, or will it, will it be helpful? And uh, I think that's kind of how I, I go through it. I agree 100% with Gemma, you, you, you're not an expert on everything. Um, you can't be expected to be like, you know, we're all in our kind of lane of, you know, what is our life experience that we're sharing on social uh, in the hopes to connect to others with a shared experience. And so I think it's, it's hard to be an expert on all the things, but that's my little, that's my little litmus test before I post something. I like that. Can you give them a clap for what they're doing so far? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're gonna go into a Q&A time and then I'll ask some questions during that as well. Um, if you have a question, just line up at the microphone, and I would, I would do it. You have some really great thinkers here. So if you have a question, just line up at the microphone. It's right over there. I'm pointing to it. And while they're doing that, I'm going to ask you guys a, another question. And it, it has to do with this idea of where you think social media is going. Mm. You think it's going to continue to escalate or is it is it softening? Where, where do you see it going? Start with you, Cindy. Yeah, um, I don't see it backing down at all. I think we have been trained uh, to consume content this way. I think it is is the you know change to, this is the big debate, like is it audio, is it video? I mean, that will be maybe the, the trends yeah. that thread throughout or the, the, mo the moments in time and one will fall out of favor and one will fall in a favor, but I don't think we will ever return to consuming content in a very long form type of way. Okay, so we'll start with the first person with a question. Just say your first name, where you're from, and then who the question is towards. Sure, yeah, so my first name is Anton. Uh, I'm from Toronto. Uh, yeah, so my question is, uh, given your experience in social media, I'm sure, um, I assume you guys had your experience with like haters, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, <laughs> definitely. So um, my question is like, how is the best way to deal with a hater on social media? Like, 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 do you block them? Do you mute them? Do you call them out? Or do you ignore them? Or any other recommendations? Gemma, go ahead. Um, so I, I think I mean, it depends what they're saying. Um, there are people who um, you can tell want to have a conversation. There are people who you can tell just want to have an argument. Um, so the people that are coming from just a place of rage and um, hate, I will just block immediately because I know there's no, there's no point arguing. It's just going to upset me. Um, nobody's getting anything useful out of it. Um, and then 
I also am conscious that my um, replies to people are read by a lot of people, and um, I do not want to cause um, a like piling on to somebody. So if somebody says something that I disagree with, I can reply to them in disagreement. Um, but then I'll have a lot of my followers also replying to them. Um, and yes. so I'm just very wary of doing anything that's going to cause very that true. kind of pile on. I think that's right. They cross a the line, they're blocked. Um, if it's just something of you know, a different opinion, I, I think that it's your choice on engaging. And my, my usual go-to is, um, well, I will respect your opinion if you will respect mine. Cool. Thank you. Very good. Good question, too. First name and where you're from. Hi. Um, thank you all for being here and raising this topic. My first name is Lena. I'm from Berkeley, California. And I guess for Cindy specifically, um, you brought up funding for entrepreneurs yeah. and this glamorization of yeah. entrepreneur lifestyle or the funding cycle, I guess. Do investors play a role? And if so, what should investors be doing or not doing, especially related to social media, but more mm. generally around this glamorization of the entrepreneur experience? Yeah. Um, yeah. Any thoughts there? I, I think investors can offer, I, it's great that investors will get online and like offer tips. I actually put out something about pitch peeves and I wanted to give everybody an insight of like, look, don't go in the room and do this because I'm gonna tell you by the odds you won't get the check. Um, so I hope that you know investors do things that are constructive to give people uh, an advantage so that they enter a room more prepared. Um, but I think that just the like, you know, everything just being about the money is the disconnect. Right, everything just being about the size of the check and then this, that's just contributing to, to I think, it's harmful um, for expectation and, and you know, it makes struggling entrepreneurs that are looking to get their first thousand bucks from somebody um, think, oh no, I'm failing, um, when it's really quite a long journey. Thank you. Thank you for your question. Yes, thanks. Okay. Hi, I'm Dory and from Austin, Texas. Hi, Dory. And I'd like to Thanks hear for from driving so far. I know. It was really about <laughs> well, she 20 came in the traffic, minutes. right? She came by train. She's like, come on. <laughs> uh, I'd like to hear from both of you, really specifically, when you read a message that triggers anger mm. or shame or sadness, and don't repeat whatever that message is. We don't need to reinforce that. But when you immediately get that and feel that emotional response, what do you personally do to recover from that and stabilize yourself? Ooh, that's a good question. I think that's a very good that question. That is a good question. Because even I feel that, and I'm very optimistic. Yeah. <laughs> Gemma. Yeah. Um, well, the first thing to do would be to step away from social media, I think, for me, um, because I, I do get very um, easily upset by, th by things like that. Um, and it's easy to forget that social media isn't the whole world, it's just like a microcosm. Um, and then um, I actually, it, it's kind of cheesy, but I do keep a little folder of um, nice messages that I've had um, over the years, and um, I go back and I look at those. I think that's super, that's super smart. I do too, I love that. Gemma, how do you do that? Do you take a picture of them? or Yeah, what? I just screenshot them, yeah. and then I have a little folder on my desktop with a smiley face. <laughs> mm. and then that, I have that's a smart takeaway. Okay, that is. So I like that. I go and see my dogs. Oh my God, <laughs> I love it. I'm gonna have a dog theme here too, which is, I like to read it repeat it to my dog, ask my dog if they feel the same <laughs> way, and then let it go off. I, I mean, really and truly, like that's I a, love that. I love to say it out loud and like look at, you know, somebody or something that loves you uh, unconditionally and say no. And then it's lost its power. I think you just can't give it power. How do those answers sit with you? Both of them seem powerful. Uh, one, reminding yourself in the moment of the strong negative what's positive about what you're doing yeah. in your work and what you're offering to the world. And then Cindy, yours is unique because it's a method of allowing it to flow through. Yeah. And I think that could be really powerful. You have a thank great you. voice to communicate. What do you do with that voice? Oh, what? Thank you. I built and sold a bookkeeping firm. Just did that last year. Yes. So still celebrating that. 
And so now I've moved into coaching. I do startup coaching in, in the startup space here in Austin. Good. Fantastic. You're, you're, you're good in front of a uh, crowd and with a mic. A ripe space, Thank too, you. in Thanks. Austin. Okay, who's next? Your name and where you're from. Greetings. I'm Dr. Erica Jones, MD, from Atlanta, Georgia. So I actually have a question for all three of you. For our frontline workers like myself, who are battling in person, right, and we're trying to decrease the stigma of mental health. Yeah. We're looking for ways to elevate our voices via social media. What recommendations do you have in terms of resources? And personally, what resources have you actually um, provided so that we may be able to reach out to you all. You know, we're out there working, and we may only have like 300 followers at the end of the day, but you know, we're in the communities, and for people who do want their voices uplifted, for people who are present on social media, what tips and resources do you all have? We'll start with you, Gemma, anything? Um, well, personally, I work with um, Mental Health America a lot. Um, I find that they are great. They're really good at social media. Um, their website is really great. They have a lot of quizzes, which I think people really appreciate. Um, and they, ha they use a lot of visuals. So I think that they, um, they kind of approach mental health from a lot of different angles um, for different types of people, which is really helpful. I'm trying to decide if I understand the question. For your voice on social, for providers, providers, for mental health providers, for um, entrepreneurs who are in that space yeah. who are also providing those services. So it's more so like a, a, a very direct question yes. for the provider's voice. Yeah. Okay, well, first I bow down for the MD. Yes. Thank you for <laughs> what you of, do. Of course. I love, um, you know, fabu fabulous women in medicine. Um, that's my field, I love it. And, uh, and I think that you have such expertise that you can share. If there was a trend, actually, on social that I watch closely, it is how many physicians are getting online. Yeah. And through the simplicity of TikTok or Reels, explaining conditions in plain language in a way that really connects with people. And I think it is, I get it, you're working long, hard days, um, but you are doing such a service in getting out there and explaining, I think, some of these stigmatized conditions where people would otherwise never want to take the first step. You're creating a welcoming environment for them to I do. I love what you're saying. So, you know, you've all heard that saying, Success is finding the need and filling it. Mm -hmm. So I agree with Cindy because, you know, I'm part of this group called Live Person that I mentioned, and we do some things on mental health. I also have an app called the Mind Me app that is like calm, but we need you yeah. to rise up, step up, and step in. Go ahead and clap for her, right? Let her, let her do it. Thank you. No, don't you feel that? For sure, for sure. That's why I'm here. You know, I've been in the medical conferences and I saw that South by Southwest had like a wellness track. So today was the first day that I, I could actually it. get out. And this is the first conference that I actually, the um, first meeting that I actually stopped by. So it's a pleasure to see you all just bringing up everything in conversation. But I'll and give you my information. Let's dialogue about this. For sure, for sure. Because we have to get you on some platforms where you could share who you are, your story in that. And then let's see what happens and who gets behind what you want to do. For sure, thank you. Because there, there is a need and we need you. Thank Agreed. You. We need each other. We all love each it. other. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, um, my name is Larissa and I'm, all, I'm from West Austin. So it was further. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was uh, West. <laughs> <laughs> um, my question is, how do you deal with, with copycats and not the copycats mm. that um, is just a random per person in the other side of the world? But what happens when it's a colleague of yours or a friend of yours or someone who's in your network and goes to the same events that you do? And then they start, so once, once in a blue moon, it may be a coincidence out of um, cultural mindset, but what happens when they pick up a trend and start copying and copying and copying? How do you handle it in a way that doesn't damage your mental health and doesn't damage the relationship? Yeah. Or do you damage the relationship and psh Gemma, let's start Gemma, with you. I agree. That's um, so I don't know if I've had anyone very close to me 
um, do this, but I do deal with copycats quite often on social media. And um, I mean, it's kind of inevitable because of the, the world of social media is, you know, people are on there all day looking at the same things. And I think part of that problem is just the algorithm. Um, it rewards um, um, a certain look. Um, if you look at one, um, one artist's work, then it will recommend similar artist's work. Mm -hmm. And so you kind of end up in this, like, um, world of kind of sameness. So um, I think it's really important to step outside of social media or, or somehow try and fool the algorithm into uh, showing you something else. So I understand why it happens that um, you get copycats. Um, and it does upset me sometimes <laughs> and I try not to let it, but it does because it feels like people capitalizing on something that you've worked really hard on you know, if you've worked for years and years to build your brand up and someone just comes in from nowhere and starts doing the same thing, it can be really jarring. Um, but I also have to remind myself at the same time that because I've worked for so long um, on myself and on my work that it's authentic and hopefully people can see everything that's come before it and everything behind it um, up to the point where I am now. Um, I think... Um, it's seeing artifice is quite easy. If you look at it, if I try and look at it from an outside perspective is what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. um, and No, that's good. Yeah. I think you answered it. So we have eight minutes left. All right, Cindy, how would you answer that? Copycats? Yeah. I, well, imitation is the greatest imitation. form of flattery, right? And I think that people really do recognize probably who did it first uh, and who's the fast follower. So you should just have that piece. But if it's somebody that you know y you are willing to address it head on with, I think the way that you say it is, hey, why don't we collaborate on something? Like if we want to do content, let's do it together. Or, and then what we could do is you'd share mine and I'd share yours. And it just takes away that it has to be original, that their original thought for you to share it. But actually, it's a way of addressing, I don't know how close of a professional colleague or if it's a competitor, um, but if it was a close professional colleague, I would say, hey, why don't we, I, it looks pretty similar. Why don't we just collaborate on the next one? Thank you for your question. Um, Cindy, can you read the, the bottom question? Yes. Mm -hmm. How do you see corporate social responsibility transfer to non-corporate entrepreneurs or influencers? Can you give us a short answer, then we'll go over here. I don't see a transfer. Okay. I mean, I don't see it in practice today. Yeah. Um, because I think that the you know folks that are online as influencers are operating as lone sort of lone wolves in it. They're not bound by some Makes kind sense. of corporate social responsibility, and therefore they're not. W w the, the the philosophy of whether or not it should apply is a different discussion. Okay. Very nice. Your name and where you're from. Uh, my name is Michael. I'm from Los Angeles. Uh, first of all, thank you guys for being here. I uh, really enjoyed this conversation. Um, I guess my thought is, and I'm curious, all three of you, what you think about this. Um, entrepreneurs and creators, I think, they think macro over micro, and they want to make an impact on the world. And from what I've seen, a lot of that doesn't happen because they're not focused on uh, their immediate relationships, the people they work with how they relate to themselves, and the world is a reflection of you know, our relationships. So I, I see entrepreneurs um, kind of burning out and coming into this realization uh, all the time, and I think you know, the ones that get a second wind, they really want to share the things that work for them mm -hmm. on their social media channels so that they can educate other entrepreneurs or people who look to them for guidance. With that said, you know, there is that kind of challenge of not wanting to just imitate other people who are, you know, providing those, uh, that kind of content. So I'm curious, what do you think the best way to approach um, educating your audience on those kind of things that work for you personally? Is it creating educational content? Is it looping in specialists for programming to have an open dialogue rather than, you know, prescribing a solution? Michael, number one, I like how you think. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So I, I say that the big is in the little and the littles and the big. And so I think all three of us, we never tried to get big. For me, I, I'm just a humanitarian. I was doing my job, minding my own business, and people started paying attention. 
And I think same with you, Gemma. Yeah, I, I mean, when I started out, social media wasn't even a big thing. So I just happened to catch that wave. I'd still be doing the same work that I'm doing if social media didn't exist. I'd just be doing it in some other way. I like that statement. I mean, it's, well, it's well said. And I think maybe the best way to share that content is in conversation. I mean, I think that's what's so fun about this is the perspective. So if you've been through it and you want to share it with others, um, certainly you could create your own your own uh, programming or whatever that is. But how cool would it be if, if you offered like a perspective of constantly talking to others who are in a similar place? Yeah, and that's why we're here. We're, we're, we're here as educators and people that are listening. <clears throat> so I think we're all here to educate, but also we're here to learn. Mm -hmm. For sure. Good job, Michael. Thank you, guys. Okay, last question of the day. I made it. Hi, everyone. I'm Chanel Adikono. I am Indonesian by way of Southern California. And in the wake of, well, this is the one year anniversary of the Atlanta shooting um, and the hit again w against Asian women. And as a Southeast Asian immigrant first generation, I have this passion. This is kind of like a, my side gig and trying to run this project, co founder of Southeast Asian Voice, uh, abbreviated into SEAT. We want a seat at the table. However, you know, I'm doing this, as you mentioned, out of love, out of passion to amplify our voices because there is a gap in Southeast Asian voices. But I'm a very private person. I don't want to be known or, you know, be famous. I do it because I am a humanitarian at heart as well. That's what I do prof professionally. And that makes me nervous, and you may have addressed this, but how do you, you know, do the safeguard of safety and privacy? I am honestly afraid to be like stalked. Um, yeah. I think Cindy has an answer to that. Yeah. But to, to address to you, what you're saying head on, Mother Teresa was never trying to be famous. Right. She was just being Mother Teresa. That's right. So that's a great role model. That's right. So Cindy, what would you add to that? And then we'll close with Gemma. Yeah, I, I, I understand that fear. I do. I'm actually very introverted, very private. Um, when I hired one of my first employees in a company, she said, I could find nothing out online about you. I'm like, that's the nicest thing anyone's ever said yeah. to me. Mm -hmm. And boy, has that vastly changed. She still works with me 16 years later, and she, she teases about that. And I think it was a process of, of letting go um, and, uh, and being, being vulnerable, I think, in that, but knowing that um, it, it, would, it would be very hard. Speak up, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Speak up. You're doing it out of all the right, it's coming from the right place. It is your passion, and you are helping others by doing it. Never let anybody intimidate you from using that voice. Thank you. Really good. Cindy for president. Oh. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I am I'm coming from a different angle, so I got my um, my avatar of myself um, I'm never actually putting myself out there as such and it gives me a certain la layer of protection um, so I mean I don't mean literally make yourself into a cartoon character but um, you can consider having some kind of avatar or yeah. spokesperson yeah. or something that's not necessarily yourself personally great thank that's you that's cool that concludes the question and answer Fantastic. So, Gemma, how do people follow you? And then, Cindy, how do people follow you? What is well, just your Instagram? Um, so, you can follow me um, on Instagram at Gemma Corral. So, it's all just one word, Gemma Corral. You made it very easy for us. <laughs> I am at Cindy Pink CEO. So, thank you to my guests. Could you please give them a, a round of applause <laughs> for taking the time <laughs> and for preparing, you both prepared. And some of you don't know, we've had other conversations where we've dialogued together. Yeah. And so, you know, we take this very, very um, serious because it's a, it's a serious thing. So thank you for taking the time and coming to this session. And uh, life is good. Nice to meet you, thank you.